decomposition is a big problem across the world. If you live in North America, some part of Europe and China, I would say choosing compositing as a career might pose only few challenges, but would be okay after a long while. But if you live in places such as Africa, South America, some part of Europe and other parts of Asia, and you jump into compositing as a main career, hmm, this might be hard, but it's the truth. Finding a job within your locality might be impossible because these are areas that don't have 3D animation going on. And if there is no 3D animation work running through a pipeline, then what's going to be the purpose of compositing, right? The first thing to consider before jumping into compositing or 3D animation in general is to first of all, survey your locality or country to see if it's something that is common. This will help you know the firms around hiring, right? If you realize it's something not common but you still love it and want to make it a career choice then kindly take notice of this these are just my personal tips you can call them advice it might not work for everybody but hey i've tried it it's worked for me so it might work for you too one you can create a youtube channel and share your works with the general public it works like magic you would soon have companies all over your inbox wanting to work with you my channel might seem to be very small but hey i get a lot of companies reaching out for a collab youtube works like magic number two is going to be job postings there are so many job posting platforms around you can look into if your portfolio is pretty tight a couple of good places will be linkedin jubo or glassdoor every 3d artist needs a decent cv and portfolio if you can't write a cv because of language barrier or you just can't but your skills are top notch kindly visit openaichat.gtp or gpt.com i'll leave it here and issue the command write me a freaking resume for a 3d compositing job and the system will do some magic for you immediately hey if you're pro watching me and you have any advice for newbies kindly leave them in the comment section below and i would appreciate it now who is a compositor let me begin from the top to the bottom a skilled compositor should be able to layer various elements together in a way that will make them appear as if they naturally belong in the same space. Let me give you a typical example. Let's say you have a script with a scene where a chopper in the midst of an apocalypse has to land on top of a building, pick a couple of dudes and take off again. This scene, just like any other similar scene, would first of all require a plate, which will be our background. So in this instance, the plate will consist of the whole city in this particular scene, with the chopper placed in the foreground. Now this is what happens. The animator animates the chopper. The FX artist adds particles, could be anything that contributes to distraction. Once this is all rendered out, the compositor layers the chopper, distribution particles, replaces the plate with building, color matches and Z depth to bring it all together. Sounds simple but harder than a nipple. I wouldn't speak on Z depth because it's not in... Wait, Z depth is very important. Okay, you can set that up on Google and I'm sure you would find something there on Z depth. Or maybe I might document something on Z depth and leave it in my description below when I upload this video. Like I said, let's do it from top to bottom. I hope you remember that. Nowadays, a small inexpensive green screen is easy to come by. It won't be the same quality as a blockbuster film, but it's good enough to practice keying with. Pick one up and shoot simple scenes with a couple of friends. Work on keying and replacement. Get a similar shot without a screen to practice rotoscoping. Now, these are essential skills for a junior compositing artist. You need them because you can't enter into this field without not grasping this at your fingertips. If you want to become a compositor, it is important that you understand the basics of compositing. There are many techniques and workflows used in 3D compositing and the specific process can vary depending on the project and software being used. The most basic concept every junior artist should know includes color theory, vector graphics, keying and rotoscoping and maybe camera tracking. There is a long definition for compositing but this is how I define compositing combining CG elements with live shots. There are tons of compositing softwares out there to look into if you are now starting out. A couple of them will be Autodesk, Flame, Nuke, FuseFX, Blackmagic Fusion, After Effects and Natron. There is also Smoke but is Smoke still in use because it's been a long while since I saw anybody use it. They are all not the same guys. They are different based on star, available depth of tools, features and workforce. 
Now, this is how I would categorize them. To work in bigger pipelines, you can go in for Black Magic Fusion Studio, Flame, and Fuse, FX, or Nuke. Yeah. To work in small to mid range studios, use After Effects, Black Magic Fusion Studio, or Fuse FX. To work in small skilled firms, you can go in for Blender, After Effects, or Natron, or Black Magic Fusion free version yeah if you are a freelancer then either natron after effect blender or black magic fusion free version will be okay without wasting any more time let's talk about nuke and after effect other software would follow in my subsequent videos nuke is a node based compositing tool i'm pretty sure everybody knows what a node based tool is by now nuke right from the beginning was built for high-end visual effect they never had small to mid-range studios in mind until recently where they had to revise their pricing but it's still not cheap the node based workflow makes it much easier to build far more complicated effects in a more efficient style it also runs python so it's possible to highly customize it and fit it in any bigger pipeline or two and other applications i wouldn't say nuke was designed to work on a single shot at a time but trying to edit or create a sequence of shots in nuke is super messed up i'm not sure they really paid attention to that from the beginning but since nobody is calling for it i guess people are cool with it so let's just leave it there i doubt any other compositing tool can compare to the set of comprehensive 3d tools nuke offers not just that nuke works in high bit and floating point color by default a couple of downsides to using nuke will be one motion graphics each tools for motion graphics are kind of basic but it's not really a big deal for nuke users because they know nuke wasn't built for that two is that nuke is the most expensive compositing software in the world if i'm not wrong but i think the foundry over the years have done a great job at reducing their prices because nuke version 7 was a bomb super expensive and that was why i said in the beginning they didn't have beginners and freelancers in mind they went in for the bigger production houses right from the onset number three is going to be licensing and installation problems you might encounter a couple of errors when licensing new from the beginning but one advantage of its high price tag is its excellent after sales support which i personally think is the best and fastest comparing it to the rest it's this level of customer care that has arguably made nuke the de facto standard for high-end compositing another downside will be rendering I still don't know why a lot of software still struggle with rendering. It would be beneficial to improve the performance of the scanline render node or consider alternative options other than render man. A lot of 3D works are being integrated into these other 3D packages and I think that is what is causing scanline's render node speed issues. There was no update to it in new version 13, 13.1 and now 14. Come on Foundry. In conclusion, I would say Nuke is more of a finishing tool and has a lot of scripting hooks for automation but if you are interested in some 2d and 3d text or vector shape animation then after effect is the way to go after effect isn't the main go-to compositor when it comes to heavy liftings and wouldn't fetch you enough money on a single project like or as compared to nuke it's generally used almost entirely amongst independent or freelancers and other smaller production houses. After Effect is a layer based compositing software, not ideal for complete 2D or 3D lengthier projects, in my opinion, especially if you are running it on a laptop with a smaller screen. It's generally used for creating 2D animations, motion graphics, UI designing. Most people refer to After Effect as a 2.5D software, but that's actually true if you are running it right out of the box without any plugins. Linking After Effect with Cinema 4D and also getting yourself certain plugins such as Element 3D would help you achieve certain cool 3D stuff. Adobe After Effect can also do some basic compositing tasks such as rotoscoping, motion, and camera tracking and adding 3D elements to a scene. But this doesn't make it a complete professional VFX package. There are deep flaws you would encounter if you try heavy liftings in adobe after effect and the most basic amongst these flaws is its layer based system and the fact that it relies heavily 
on third-party plugins to function effectively. Also, most of the third-party plugins for After Effects are old and yet to receive an update in over seven years. It's just really difficult to compose something really clean in After Effects, especially if it's layers or um, pre comps becomes too many. You just get lost working on your own project. But if you are into 2D animation, motion graphics, or basic compositing duties and don't have that huge sums of money Nuke is requiring, then Adobe's monthly subscription will be great for you to begin with. As a 3D compositor, you have to know what you really want to achieve, go straight at it, and master it inside out. This is the kind of vibe I'm picking amongst people who heavily compose it. Almost all the ones I know have after effects on their machines. I have not really taken time to ask why, but this is what I think. After Effects is a software you can use on certain minor works and make some really quick cash. I mean, what's happening if there is no job and Nuke is all you know, right? How are you going to continue paying for the Nuke license? So in this case, if you really want to compose it in various production houses, especially on TV commercials and certain short ads, then you should definitely learn After Effects in addition to whatever software that you know. So it could be Nuke with After Effects as backup. Yeah, that's what I mean. This is just my personal take. Always focus on improving your craft and not jumping from one software to the other. I personally don't think that's really necessary. So if it's motion graphics you want to hit on, jump right on After Effects and Cinema 4D. If it's 3D modeling, just think of where you want to work, study the kind of software they use, start developing your craft with Blender and Blackmagic since they are free. Make some money, purchase the target software the company you are targeting is working with, transfer the knowledge you had from Blender, right? onto the newly purchased software, study it for a while and start building massive portfolios with them. Also do well to create a YouTube account and share those portfolios as reels, get more views, make money, aim higher and continue doing this, you would suddenly find yourself magically working on the next Avengers. I bet if this happens, your favorite song will be started from the bottom now we hear. I'll be speaking on Black Magic Fusion, Natron and Blender in my next video. If you love this video, kindly don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Until my next video, peace out.